you can use jQuery to manipulate CSS. In fact, it's incredibly easy because once you call the jQuery CSS method, you're just using CSS syntax and language to modify the CSS. It's kind of like jQuery is the X-woman, Mystique, who can shapeshift and mimic the look of other people. jQuery can mimic CSS and use the same language in order to access its powers. Wait a minute. Isn't that what Rogue does? So jQuery is the ultimate X-man, is what I'm trying to say. So in order to show you how jQuery can modify the CSS, I've set up this HTML page called css.html. Kind of funny. Uh, basically, just download that uh, that file in the final course files that you downloaded uh, previously, or you could just uh, pause the video and copy this, whatever your preferred system or method, method is. So go ahead and do that. And basically, we're going to be working with, in this HTML page, just two divs, one with the the div with the ID of circle one, the other one div ID of circle two. You'll notice the first one has the class of circle shape, and that is because uh, here in the browser, uh, it's gonna give it a circle shape because the CSS, I have a class called circle shape, and that's going to just uh, give it a circle. Now, this is basically right here. This is circle one. I've styled the first div uh, with the ID of circle one using just CSS, and I'm going to use jQuery to give it the same styles uh, but using jQuery so that you can compare them to see how, how it looks. And this is the CSS. You're, you're going to want to download that as well or just copy that into your CSS file. And so let's just jump into our jQuery and uh, do what we need to do. So here in jQuery, I have this little flag here, the jQuery CSS lecture. And basically, we're just going to style the uh, ID of circle two. And so for jQuery, in order to play with CSS, you need to use the CSS method, which is simply this. And in the parentheses is where you add the styles. Now there are two ways of adding styles in jQuery. You can quickly and simply add a single style like so. Strings here, single or double, whatever works for you. And I could say something like background, and then outside of that, that um, uh, string there, put a comma, and then you put the style here. So you have your property, and then your value. So you have property and strings separated by comma and then the value. Save that and we'll just check it out. So you can see it has the same background color. Now it's not the same shape and stuff, but that's okay. Uh, we have the background color. Now you might be wondering, well, how do we add multiple styles? Will we do something like this and we just copy and paste and paste and change the property and the value like so? Well, you can but that's a terribly inefficient way of doing it. And as we've learned previously in jQuery chaining, you know you wanna be doing the most efficient way possible. And this is just telling the browser in five separate instances or more to find this div and then do this. Now we wanna keep it as efficient as possible. And in uh, the CSS method, you could add multiple uh, styles, multiple property and value combinations within the parentheses, but you simply just change the syntax a little bit. So instead of like this, which is just for a single style, you do something like this. You put the opening and closing curly braces, like so. And in here is where you would add multiple styles. Now you could probably do something like this, and then you could separate them line by line, but let's start uh, in just a single line syntax. And then in here you put strings, single or double again, so I got my single strings. And then start off with the property. So background, you'd add a colon. So this is kind of copying the CSS syntax even, even more so. Another set of strings, and then the value. And then you separate that style with a comma. And then you do another combination. So let's copy more styles here. What do we have? We've got uh, display inline block, color white. Let's just do all of these. So basically, we're going to do this but multiple times and copy the styles from here. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's just start from the top and work our way down. And there we go. There are all the styles separated by comma on a single line. Now, as you can see, it's kind of hard to read. And if you wanted to add or modify styles, it could get a little bit uh, painful because it's just it's hard to read. So what you can easily do is just separate everything on se single uh, lines. So like so. And that will do the same thing as when it's on a single line and it won't negatively affect or, or break anything. It's, it will work just the same. And this is what it will look like. And here we go. We have all the styles here, but you'll notice that it's a square, unlike the CSS, that is a circle. And that's simply because I used a class 
to give the circle shape. Now I could have easily added WebKit uh, and Moz border radius in here in the styles uh, to, to give that, those styles, but just to make it a little bit different, I wanted to uh, show you that you can use the add class method. Now it's not directly the CSS method, and I know this is the CSS lecture, but I'm, a, I'm considering that a CSS um, skill or a thing to know in jQuery because it is directly related to CSS. So this is how you do that. You just simply select what you're selecting and then add class. That's the add class method. And then in strings, you just tell the class that you're adding without the dot, without the period, just the class name. And that is circle shape camel cased. Save that, check it out, and that will give you your circle shape. Now you might be wondering, hey, why didn't you chain that? Couldn't you have chained that? Yep, you're right. I didn't need to add a second uh, declaration here, a uh, second statement. So I'm just gonna uh, cut this part and delete that, and then just tag it onto the end here at the end of the parentheses. Paste, no double semicolon. Here we go, save it, and there we go. You have the, the styles there. Now you might've noticed too, when I refresh, do you see how you could, there's kind of a little bit of a jump there? That's because that's jQuery loading. jQuery waits until the browser and the page has loaded everything and then jQuery loads. And that's why it has a little bit of delay there. That's just how jQuery works. And so now here we have a single statement, just a single statement here with the styles and an add class chained on the end there. And so, yeah, that's how that works. Now, just a quick note on how this all works. You shouldn't be adding any jQuery uh, for content that you need uh, the user to see. That's uh, vitally important. Say like your logo or your navigation bar or the primary content of your blog post or the buy now button of your e-commerce website. You don't want to do that because some browsers and users disable JavaScript and jQuery is an extension of JavaScript. So therefore it will be disabled if they don't have it disabled, uh, enabled. And that maybe is not the most common, but it is something that happens. Um, certain devices don't enable JavaScript, maybe like, uh, older devices or e-readers, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, or, uh, users who just, maybe they're on computers that have that disabled, like a government computer or a work computer or something like that. Whatever the case, it is out there. And if you're using jQuery and JavaScript to serve up important and primary content, uh, then you're going to really screw up the user experience because, hey, now they can't see their buy now button that animates in, or they can't see your logo because for some reason you use jQuery to add your logo, or they don't see any styles because you use jQuery to style your entire site. You don't wanna do that. The reason why you'd wanna use jQuery or the CSS or anything in jQuery for that matter is simply to enhance the behavior of the website. Now the importance of everything on your site is like so. HTML for your content and the meaning. But basically if the user has jQuery, JavaScript, and CSS disabled, which can happen, uh, you want them to be able to at least read and digest your content. Then CSS, which makes your website pretty. Styles things, organizes content using the layout and so on and so forth and then the behavior, which is JavaScript and jQuery. So keep that in mind when you're developing your sites. And we've got some more good stuff coming up next, so hang in tight. <laughs>